Finally, an answer to the age-old question, which comes first, the chicken or the egg roll? Easy. Just eat whichever one's closest. The Sensation Salad and Filet Sandwich Meal are back at Zaxby's. Both feature our famous hand-breaded chicken, crispy wontons, Asian slaw, and citrus vinaigrette. And each comes with its very own egg roll. For a limited time, only at Zaxby's. Prime with fried pickles while supplies last. From Tally to Cali, it's time to wake up. Wake up, wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source. And this is Wake Up Warchant, presented by Zaxby's. Now here's Warchant.com's Aslan Hudjavandi and Corey Clark. Wake up! What's up, everybody? It's Wake Up War Champ, proudly presented by Zaxby's. Indescribably good. Check out all their great locations around Tallahassee, as well as Mariana, Douglas, Georgia, and Thomasville, Georgia. It's Zaxby's. It's indescribably good. Warchant.com, that's your ultimate symbol sports source. Use that promo code Warchant30 for 30 free days of access to the website. You can get Ira's columns, Corey's columns, Michael Langston's recruiting, Gene Williams' insight, and a couple of videos we sprinkle in every now and then. That's on our YouTube page as well. If you're listening to this on YouTube also, by the way, thumbs up on it and shout out at us. Give us a five-star review on iTunes. We haven't asked for that in a long time. Uh, we appreciate those. But I appreciate more than anything being able to co-pilot this spaceship whirling through the atmosphere with none other than Corey S. Clark. Corey, my man, how are you? I am good. Awesome. <laughs> Moving forward. Um, this football team, the defense seems to be pretty good. You wrote a pretty good column Thank afterwards you. from the scrimmage, kind of summing up your thoughts after another scrimmage has passed with the defense apparently having the upper hand. Not to spoil all of it, what was your takeaway? What was the crux of your column? Well, it was funny, you know. I do these uh, the 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 wildly popular uh, interview wrap up update things that I do while they're doing the press conferences, and then I looked. Uh, I I went back to the thread for some reason, and I saw all the comments of just oh here we go again. Great, here's another season. I thought the offense was supposed to be better. I thought Atkins knew what he was doing. Like all these negative comments about the offense, and it just struck me as like what what did y'all expect? Number one. And this is a much better, this is much more encouraging to have a defense that you that was so bad last year be dominant. This defense last year got run over by Louisiana Monroe. It got embarrassed by virtually every off, offense it faced. So let's just let's just assume the Florida State offense will be average because of the offensive line. We might not, you know, you might not have a great quarterback. So a little bit above average. Well, your def are average. Your defense went out and apparently just I was gonna say I couldn't even come up with it. I was gonna say molly whopped. But is that a thing? Is that what people say? <laughs> sure. Sure. So, Let's roll with it. I'll check it out. They went out and molly whopped them and dominated. And that to me, when you're in the when you're still three weeks from camp or three weeks from your opener. Man, it is such a better you know what the offensive line is gonna be. I think these guys will piece it together and it can be okay. But man, the, the biggest strides that had to be made, even more than the offensive line, was on the entire side of that ball on defense. And if that defense is out there playing up to its potential or close to it and creating havoc and making it hard, that is absolutely the best sign. And it reminded me of one time, uh, uh, I think I might have told this story, I don't remember, when I was dating Shanna, uh, you know, Shanna, she's not the first lady of Wake Up Board Champ, but we Correct. all know who Shanna is. She voluntarily walked away from that title. Kind of like she Meghan did. Markle she walking did. away from the British she Empire. She gave Way it up. Go. I couldn't believe it. Way um, to get it over. Back when we were dating, it, it must have been 99. It might have been the 98 or 90. It was either 98 or 99 season. 98, the beginning of the 98 season. Um, we went, and they were having a scrimmage at night in August. That floor, Remember that Florida State team mm -hmm. and all that means with all that talent. And we went and watched that, that scrimmage, and I promise you the offense might have gotten two first downs. I mean, it was just completely annihilated. The DBs were running back pick sixes. There were just punt after punt after punt. Like, the, the defense completely dominated them. And then I read in the Democrat the next day how Bowden was, you know, he, wasn't ups he was upset by how the offense played. He's like, we got a long way to go. But, man, that defense is good. And so, and, and that 98 team turned out to be all right. You know what I mean? That offense ended up being pretty good. It had some nice players on it. Uh, Peter Warwick and a guy that won a Heisman a couple years later. So you can't let one one bad scrimmage from the offense dictate how you feel about the potential of a season, especially when it's doing what it's doing poorly against your defense. And again, 
just go dot. You have enough players at every level to, to be a really good, fast, physical defense. And it sure sounds like it was on Saturday night, which to me is, is much, it's much better than the alternative of, oh, they went back and forth. The offense had some moments. Uh, actually, the offense scored six touchdowns and had 600 yards. You would hate to hear that. That would be awful news for a Florida State fan, in my opinion. This defense has to be back, get back to being a Florida State defense. And, it, and it's got the talent this year to be pretty good. And it sounds like it's, you know, they're, they're slowly instilling this attitude of, uh, you know, kind of, kind of winning at every level. Molly whopping, according to Urban Dictionary, the unofficial official dictionary of Wake Up War Chant, defines molly whopping as the impending act of physically beating a person until they can no longer stand. Origin, Irish. Example. Okay. Stand back. There's about to be some molly whopping going on up in here. Yeah, the way that's said, though, it, it acts like it, it's it's in. Uh, I mean, is it a noun? Can you act? Can can you? Is it a verb? Can you molly whop someone? Yeah, I think it, I think it, verb is the. Uh, the, uh, the, the category or whatever. Okay. What, what do you think? Right, I don't good. Know. Good. So yeah, there was a Terrible. there was a molly whopping on Saturday night, and uh, I think it, it, you'd much rather the defense be ahead of the offense and doing what it's doing, especially against this offensive. I mean, you should be look at look at who you have on that defensive front, especially if Kando is playing like this. Look who you have on that defensive front. The offensive line should struggle with that guy, with with that unit. So I, overall, I think it's a. It's a, it's a pretty good, it's a really good sign, I think, that the defense is playing like this. But don't we do this every year, though? You know, defense is always ahead of the offense, don't worry. I know in 18, they had that whole situational scrimmage where they're like, yeah, we scored like 20 touchdowns on yeah. offense. And we're like, oh, man, Virginia Tech's going to get blown back to Roanoke or Blacksburg. Uh, I imagine they probably fly out of Roanoke. I don't know. Maybe Gator Kirk knows. They might fly out of Blacksburg. Yeah. So I think that's what it was because it, it, there was an interesting sort of dichotomy on the boards because I woke up and read Ira's 3-2-1. I read your column. I'm like, wow, you know. I just thought maybe the way that Kenny Dillingham and Mike Norvell spoke on Saturday made you think they're mildly concerned about where the offense is currently. And then you and Ira kind of pointed out the positives and, you know, just how this is the natural course of a football team progressing through the preseason. But then I go on to Warchant.com's Tribal Council, and to your point, I guess, you saw all these sort of quote-unquote negative comments, and that seems to be uh, the prevailing a bit of energy, at least on Sunday. Well, it's it also, it, it's like, okay, well, is the I, I understand the under, other side in the sense that, okay, is the defense playing well because it's good? Or is right. it playing well because it's going, uh, going up against a bad offense and a train wreck of an offensive line? So I can understand that concern. My, my counter to that would be, hey, football fan, you've been watching this team now for the last two years. When did this defense ever play well against anyone? It didn't matter. So the fa in, la in, the, in the scrimmages, they didn't, uh, even against Willie's offenses. So last year, you know, they were just so awful. And, and for them to feel, number one, feel good about yourself, go make plays, be physical, um, dominate at the point of attack. That's all stuff that we haven't seen in a long time. And Unfortunately, it's coming at the expense of your offense, uh, but it's got to come at the expense of somebody. And I get you want Blackman to look great and throw for two, 250 yards and three scores, but come on, man. It's not, he, number one, he's not great. He's, he could be okay, but what you're hoping for, and I don't think it's going to be an elite defense, but you could be close, right? When you, all we've done all the last, what, three weeks have talked about what we think is going to be a vastly improved secondary, mm. like loaded with, not not loaded, but definitely featuring a few NFL players on it in a, in a defensive line that might be the best in the country. So it's, you want to see that uh, manifest itself on, in, in actual game situations on Saturdays and, you know, obviously on Saturdays during games, but in a scrimmage too, you want them to dominate, get used to it. So yeah, man, I, I, I just, if you think about the alternative of Norvell and Dillingham being really happy with the way the offense looked and Fuller being upset, saying we got run over, we couldn't cover anyone, kept making dumb pass interference penalties, couldn't get lined up, only had 10 guys on the field. Like all the things we've seen over and over from this program, I mean, you, it's so much bigger to have your defense be good right now than uh, an offensive line that you know is going to be a work in progress. Like this defense to me has the personnel to be very good. This offensive line does not. You know what I mean? Right. So let's make sure the one that actually has a potential to be very good becomes very good. That's how I, I guess that's how I would explain it. 
That's pretty good. I like that. I, I thought my, that. I thought that worked well. My concern, I think, and some of the fans, I don't know if they articulated this or not, but maybe this is where they're kind of coming from, is if you sort of read between the lines or maybe not read between the lines, just kind of take it for what it's worth at face value of what Norvell and, and Kenny Dillingham said, it's that this just sounds so on script for what's been happening the past three years. They can't do anything on first down. They're then put in second and long, and then it's game over. It's a wrap. Like, you might as well punt on third down. But don't you think the counter to that is, hey, man, these guys aren't Willie Taggart. Like, they'll get it fixed. They, but why didn't, get Kendall, at it. why didn't Kendall Browse and Randy Clements get it fixed? But Browse and Clements did do better. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, they did. That offense in 18 was a disaster. It was, it so, was I actually – I looked at Cam's stats because I, I just wanted to look at – I'm like, you know, we, were we at seven years in a row of a 1,000-yard rusher? Like, no, as on 18 – don't you remember? Yeah. yeah, it was really bad. I think was he ran for 700 awful. yards. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, I mean, I know he was banged up a little bit, but it was just awful. And yeah. so the offense did get better last year. Um, and I think these guys, uh, and I could be wrong, we'll see, but I think the combination of Atkins, Dillingham, and Norvell, to me, is probably a better combination of, than what they had um, at the top last year. And so, you know, I think the offense could make take another step. Again, it's going to be a newborn step. I don't expect this thing to be humming, scoring 40 points a game. But if it takes another newborn step and the defense takes a giant leap, then you have a chance for an eight-win season maybe. But, man, you, mean, and, I, you and Ira had hmm. that had on the Ray Pereira on YouTube asking us a question, make a score prediction. You and I are both picking 30-plus points that they're going to hang up in week one against Georgia Tech. Now, I know that's not the rambling wreck of old. I don't even know, like, what, Bobby Ross's Yellow Jackets? Yeah, what are you coming? saying, the 1990 Georgia Tech yeah, team? Yeah, they're not rolling into town, but – I mean, I guess... Well, that's the, not a ton, right? What did the team average last year? I guess week one, they did hang 31 or whatever on Boise. Yeah, I, I guess the thing, I'm just, And then just shut it down. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just... I'm not expecting maybe like a real big explosive offense, at least not without Chubba, man. Well, it's going to have to be without Chubba. Yeah. yeah so. so, it was funny, though. I was texting you and Ira about it. I don't know how many people saw the uh, <laughs> saw the video, the, the footage from the scrimmage. Right. But uh, every time Blackman or Rodemaker was dropping back to pass, whoever was standing next to the video guy, I assume it was a player because it was from the sidelines, but it could have been, I don't know, a trainer, uh, a manager. Every time they dropped back to pass, that's a pick. That's a pick. Now, I don't think they were saying Rodemaker sucks, he's about to throw a pick. I hope they were feeling like the defense is so good they're going to go make a play. But literally, when Blackman would drop back or when Rodemaker would drop back, that's a pick. That's a pick, which isn't the best sign. Well, they didn't throw a pick sponge. There was only, I think, one, and it was a drop pass. Although I don't, I don't know. I didn't go back and look at it like Zapruder film to see if it was a drop pass or if it was thrown behind the receiver. It was like, thrown into coverage for yeah. sure. So, yeah, I mean, I, I understand the sort of guarded optimism most fans have, and then I also understand the skepticism some have, and then the over the moon optimism the others have. I think you know that's probably where it, it, it splits. You know, I think most folks are cautiously optimistic. There's a part of the fan base that will always be forever optimistic and over the moon about everything because that's just the way they're wired and that's fine. Right. And there's certain people that are always going to kind of see, they're going to just think about the, the recent past and how that's so close and we're not that far from it. So why would it change overnight? And I came down, I came, I came back to earth a little bit after doing the round table mm -hmm. with you and I are in Gene just about uh, you know, after the scrimmage, but you know, maybe I should have I should have read your column once more, and then Irish three two one. I might have gone into it with a little bit more optimism. But my whole thing was just I based this turnaround on Chuba, which you know that's that sounds probably crazy in its in its own right. But I just again I just think if you can't run the ball on first down all that well or that consistently, or you're going to keep running these three yard out routes and trying to get your receiver to miss. And then if he doesn't, by the way, they had one of those throws, I think it was Keyshawn Helton and Asante Samuel just all over him. It was just, it was a good throw, good route, but Asante Samuel with better defense. But if you can't get going on first down, I just, that's where I think this falls back and starts spinning its wheels again. It's like, what can this offense with James Blackman and a fairly inadequate offensive line do on second and long that they weren't able to do? I mean, I just, I, I get that, but, if I made this point the last show, I think the offense was good enough last year to win eight or nine games. There are a couple of teams that you're just overmatched with. I think the Miami defensive line overmatched. You could have still figured out a way to win that game, but your defense let a really bad quarterback throw for 300 yards. 
Not a really bad. That's rude. He's a Gwinnett kid. Uh, not a good quarterback. Throw for 300 yards. Yeah. And I know they only scored 27 points, but they controlled the game um, because everybody against your defense controlled the game. Florida, you just it was going to be a tough one, man. It was a tough, tough ask. Clemson, you weren't going to win. Every other game, if the defense had played well, save for maybe Wake Forest, and even Wake Forest, they were, I mean, they were going up against a backup quarterback in the rain, and they couldn't get off the field. Um, they did a nice job of making them kick field goals, I think. But, um, you know, every other game, they could have won if they had a competent defense. And imagine going from what they had last year, which was the 90th best defense in the country, which is just incredible, that uh, in a place like Florida State with legitimate NFL players would be that bad, to then maybe go to an actual good defense. If the offense just is static, if it stays the same, which we, I think we both think it'll be a little bit better, I mean, but even if it just stays the exact same as it was last year, if the defense improves like it seemingly has and will, then you're talking about two or three extra wins. But if the defense stayed static and the offense got a little bit better, I don't think it matters much. You know what I mean? Does that make, like, I just think that that side of the ball is where you had to see the most improvement. Because I, uh, number one, we don't know much about Adam Fuller, but we know he's got a lot of talent this year. You know, he's not going to have Marvin in 2021. He's not going to have Asante, most likely. Um, he's not, there's, name another couple, uh, Hamsa, people like that he's not going to have. So you needed to take advantage and have this defense be much better in 2020 with all the players you got. Durden, maybe, Cooper, may, who knows? Kendo. There's a, plenty of possibilities that might be going to the NFL. So use it when you can. And it feels like that's what they're doing, at least from what the way they talked about it on Saturday night and the way Norvell's been talking up that side of the ball all, all, all camp. Ira mentioned it in his 3-2-1. It just, it's not a sexy recipe, but it is a recipe nonetheless that kind of yeah. dovetails into what you're saying is that let this defense play up to its potential. Let Marvin, let Robert Cooper blossom. Let Fabian Lovett become the impact player that How about that guy? expects. That, right. That's a guy that you thought he was just going to be, like I thought, like I shouldn't have, I guess. That, okay, that's a nice depth piece. But then the way Fuller talked about him on Saturday night, oh, no, 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 you don't understand how good this guy is. Like he's an impact player immediately is the way he talked. Yeah, for sure. I also think Corey Durden's mm -hmm. more injured than we expected going into this part of the season, so that's definitely opened the door for Fabian Lovett. Not that yeah. Fabian couldn't have overcame Corey, but it definitely sounds like the door was left kind of open or ajar for him. So – if your if your defense, if that defensive line, if those guys can play at their potential, if, if Josh Kando, and I said this on the round table, Josh Kando is probably the one singular player on that team that if he can play up to his potential will have the the single most biggest impact on on transforming yeah. uh, one side of the ball. I mean, I think even James Blackman played up to his full potential. I still don't think would nearly make the amount of impact that Josh Kando can if he can play at his his best. We like the secondary linebackers. We've you know batted that back and forth or whatever. But yeah, offense, just don't shoot yourself in the foot. Don't turn the ball over, which, you know, if you can't win first and second down, you're going to have to punt the ball. It is what it is. Maybe you have a better punt coverage. You have a better punter, better leg. But yes, yeah, don't turn the ball over. Don't shoot yourself in the foot. Avoid those mistakes. And it sounds like the discipline is being instilled in practice. There is that sort of structure. There is that sort of accountability and that being really hammered home. That yeah, so by virtue of not shooting yourself in the foot, you're going to be better as an offense. So piece that with an improved defense, a little bit better special teams. And then, yeah, you're looking at uh, two or three more wins than you had last season, which is what anybody that's a Florida State fan should be more than happy with, if that's the case. One thing, too, I see special teams blocked a kick. Everybody got a lot of, <sighs> very excited about that. That was a really high snap and a really low kick. So I'm not that stoked, but I guess it still is a block kick. But we'll, So we'll give some points to the special teams. Man, but, look at you, Debbie Downer over here. They blocked the kick, man. I thought we were talking about like B.J. Ward climbing the ladder and swatting one down in, <laughs> right. in South Bend or something, you know. Or Clifton Abraham blocking a punt and running it back. Okay, that for works a touchdown, too. Something like that. You yeah, know, something you, that would help. Show off, um, man. That works. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, I, but the other side of the coin is, I get the frustration when you read about, when you read your head coach, who was an off offensive-minded head coach, um, tell you that the offense couldn't do much of anything. They like the defense dominated in every aspect. You're like, well, what, what now? No, how, how is that happening? Like you're getting a little bit better on the offensive line, right? You do have a veteran quarterback. You've got weapons out wide and you can't get them the ball. Like nothing's working again. We don't get to see everything. Uh, we don't know. I mean, I don't think they're, they're, uh, lying to us by any stretch, but there's also a chance that maybe it wasn't quite as bad as they made it seem. 
um, or maybe it was a lot worse than they made it seem. We don't we don't have any way of knowing other than the way they talked, and those two guys were not happy. But that gets me back to my overall point. I, I don't think I, – I just – I don't. I shouldn't believe in them because they haven't been here long enough. They haven't won a game. They haven't even coached a game. I just, like I said, I think those three guys that I talked about man, with Chris Thompson too, um, the, the they the four new guys they brought in. I just trust them to have this being a functioning offense. It's not going to be Clemson. It's not going to be. It doesn't have Trevor Lawrence. It's not going to be average fifty points a game. But I think it's going to be a functioning offense that can score on almost everybody it plays. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I'm not talking about just not getting shut out. I mean, like, move up and down the field and put points on the board. And, and game plan. And make make adjustments in the middle of a game and make adjustments in the middle of a, a preseason practice. I just, I just trust that they're going to get it right. Again, I'm not expecting 1999 Florida State offense this year. But I think it will be a little bit better than 2019. And you can roll your eyes all you want and say, well, that's not saying much. Man, that, 29, that 2019 offense was good enough to probably be a nine-win team, to be a top 25 team. The defense was an abject disaster. So I think Norvell, Dillingham, Atkins will get that unit good enough to be better than almost every defense it faces, save two or three. It's those two or three, though, that you you wonder, are they going to just be flat-out dominated again? Because Clemson dominated them. They couldn't do anything. They had 50 yards at the half. Miami, they might as well even, not even played offense against that team. And then Florida, too, they didn't do a whole lot. Now they go up against what we think is a pretty good defense in the scrimmage, and they get dominated again. When does that change? We, we, the first step is to beat the mediocre teams. But eventually, you're going to also have to start beating good teams again, too. And when does that, when does that start taking place? But, again, I'll, I'll talk myself. I'll speak out of both sides of my mouth because that's what I love to do. And just say, yeah, well, Corey, you know, it's been three weeks. And they missed the entire spring. Give them a chance. I mean, there's some good defenses, though. I mean, I think there was, there was a thread on War Chant that was, you know, other than Clemson and Notre Dame, and people were even skeptical of Notre Dame, like, what defense will this offense face that's better than what they're going to see in practice every day? Now, if you're really bullish on the defense, that's a pretty good sort of train of thought to subscribe to but i pitt. just think the team's pitt, like, by the way don't sleep on pitt they yeah they do play pitt this year right correct yeah they do. yeah yeah pitt's got a good defense that's why i just think like pitt's got a good defense i think north carolina will, will be you know a, a pretty challenging game i think louisville will be a bit challenging so you know there, there's not a lot of like gimmies on the schedule as is and you just don't know i mean you did beat louisville last year so if you're incrementally better you would you would hope that you would be able to hang on to that for another win uh, I don't think they beat North Carolina if they played North Carolina last year. But again, this is, it's a new team, and Sam Howell's got to come into this house of horrors down here and and dope. Right. We'll see how he yeah. how he holds up to all that. But I just think yeah, there there's there's enough crumbs left from the press conference that if you wanted to go to negative town, you could start looking at some of these things and feel uh, the the weight of the world kind of crashing down on you. But I, th- I think you and I are probably on the the right side of things. I'm, I'm probably a little more cynical than I should be. I think again, just the way Ira kind of laid it out. Like that's not what I've. That's not what I'm accustomed to being a Florida State fan. That's not what anybody's accustomed to. I'm just gonna go out there. We're gonna play really awesome defense, and we're not gonna do anything bad on offense. We're not gonna shoot ourselves in the foot. It's like no man. It'll be gonna... like uh, well, like the Mush Champ team from uh, when was that? Twelve right. when they were they weren't good offensively at all. I think McElwain had a few teams like that, but they were elite defensively. And pretty good special teams wise, and they they won twelve games. Now here's the difference, though. I, I don't. I'm not saying this defense is elite, and I don't think you are either. We don't know what it is. It's got to be much better, though, and there it's on the way to being much better. Um, I, and I I don't necessarily. I'm not. I don't know that Mike Norvell is like. Uh, I don't know he's made to be just okay at offense. Like, oh, we're just going to try not to turn the ball over, and we're going to give. Eight. He's not Will Muschamp. He's going to want to score. So is Dillingham. They're going to want to put their foot on the gas and try to figure this thing out and have a very good offense. So know that going in. Like, I, I don't think they're going to be okay with, ah, our offense kind of sucks, but our defense is really good. So let's just let's just focus on them. And James, hand it off twice, throw a screen pass, and then let's go punt. And hey, Aussie kid, keep booming them. I, I don't think that's going to be their philosophy going into the season. I, I do think they will get better. I do. I, I, I But I also... The ceiling for the offense is only so high. You know what I mean? And we kind of know what it is, right? Like, you're not, you're not going to turn this group into an elite offense. Right. The quarterback is an elite, 
and we all know what the offensive line isn't. So it can only get it can only be so good. So if they can get somewhat close to that potential, it'll look. A, I think it'll look. A, I wasn't expecting like huge strides by the offense. You just you also lost Cam Akers. So um, you know if it could just get close to the potential and be what it was last year, maybe a little better. All right. Again, I just keep focusing on that defense, man. That defense was so far from its potential last year; it was barely playing the sport. It was it was playing a different sport. If that if the defense can get close to its potential, that to me makes all the difference. But I do think those offensive guys aren't going to be okay with just being averaged on offense. That's what you got to love about them. Those dudes are gonna those dudes are gonna demand it, and they're going to get better. I truly believe those guys will get them better. But they can only you can only get so good with with what. The, the groceries they get they have to cook with right now. Clemson was the sixth total defense in the nation. Miami 13th, Pitt 15th. So they get three of the top 15 defenses. Now, you know, I don't know how many pieces are missing from those teams. Obviously, Miami won't have Gregory Rousseau. I think their safety is also out for the season due to injury. And then Virginia was 48th, North Carolina was 49th. But I don't really fear Bronco Mendenhall and the Cavs. I do think, I do think Mac will get up for this game a little bit extra, just because he's Mac Brown and he's Tallahassee's Florida State. But yeah, your points are are, are fairly noted and uh, probably on track. My okay, concern, thanks, and it was another thing we talked about, just on the round table, which check it out over on WordChant.com. Ira, Gene, Corey, and then I sprinkle in a little bit of my nonsense. I just your uh, wisdom, your wise words. Yeah, not so much. I just can't. I'd be so, and I, and I like James Blackman. And I like James Blackman. Part of me thinks, yeah, I, don't want I to know, him. I know where you're going. I got you. Well, no, I don't want to defend him too much, but I wonder how many times, if you know you have a really good defense, maybe you're less apt to make mistakes too. Maybe you eat the ball. Maybe you throw it out of bounds when you know that, hey, we can punt the ball. We'll probably make a stop and we'll be okay. I don't know how many times you really could have done that last year. And you probably do. Obviously, James wants it so bad. Maybe he does get a little greedy back there and trying to make the game-winning play. It's like, hey, man, you don't have to do that anymore. We actually have a really good defense now, so just don't make the mistakes, and then you'll be fine. So maybe a little of that can play into it. I just wonder, ultimately, when Mike Norvell, I think it was on Friday, was asked about the quarterback, specifically uh, Tate and Jordan Travis, he was like, yeah, they're doing great. I think he mentioned a couple things, and then he pivoted to Chubba, like unsolicitedly yeah. pivoted to Chubba and the way that Chubba saw the offense. Like the guy who's been on the, on the campus the least amount out of all these guys is the one that gets a compliment when asked about the other quarterbacks, and he's the one that gets it and sees everything correctly. That's, that's the big bummer of all this, but I'd be so much more optimistic if I knew he was going to be the starting quarterback. And not that we would even know at this juncture, but if there had been another scrimmage and you heard good things about Chuba, I think this is completely a different sort of tenor and conversation we're having. And who knows? Maybe the defense doesn't win as big in the scrimmage if they're going up against Chuba. I do think that when you look at the calendar, and he's out six weeks, I think actually the sixth week would be the Miami game. So week seven, he would come back, you'd think, fully healthy, and he might come back even before then. That'd be Jacksonville State. So like, I would it, think that's where you play him. Yeah, so like for James State. Blackman, it's all about the Miami game for him. We, I think you beat Georgia Tech. I think Georgia Tech, I just really, gee, their, their defense is only one spot ahead of Florida State. So I thought Jeff Collins was a defensive minded guy. Apparently, that's a bit of a rebuild, too. You beat Georgia Tech. You have the week off, then you play Miami. And it really comes down to that game for James Black if he wants to hold on to the job, and then no one's complaining if he does. And if, and if he falters and the offense falters, then you probably next week come back with Chubba Purdy and extended action. And if he can show you what he did in that first scrimmage and he's healthy and he does see everything really great, then the season isn't lost by any means, by any stretch. You, you have a new sort of – you hit the reset button and, and a new charge to your season. So that's encouraging too, I think. Yeah, and so, yeah, he was asked specifically, Norvell was asked specifically about, uh, did you ask that question? I don't remember. No, I don't think it was me. About Tate, uh, about yeah. Rodemaker and Travis. Maybe Ira did. Uh, but um, to get him specifically to talk about those two guys, like, that, was the, uh, that was the whole intent of the question because he, wa- he hasn't. And then he said, you know, look, Jordan, he did say some nice things about Jordan Travis. Said, look, yeah. he, we told him we got here because, you know, it didn't matter what the other staff thought of him. Let us coach you. Um, as in, you know, we know they wouldn't let you throw the ball from to your mama, but we're going to let you throw. Uh, we want to we want to try to develop you as a passer. And he said he's done. You know, he used I, he I don't know if he used the word phenomenal, but he used a a word like that, a superlative like that, phenomenal, phenomenal. That's a good word. Um, it's a phenomenal, phenomenal and incredible. So phenomenal. Um, 
so he, he used one of those words to talk about Travis. And then he said, yeah, and Rodemaker, he, Tate's coming along. Uh, got, he basically mentioned composure. Got to be a little more composed. Got to see things quicker. Trust his eyes, all that. And then he went, a meet, went a meet, and got to get better in the film room and got to study in the film room. And that's when he started talking about Chubba, who he was not asked about. Nope. Started talking about Chubba, which, again, yeah, that was kind of telling. Like, he, it was almost like he was telling the – I really do think it was Ira. He was like telling Ira, yeah, don't forget about the guy that's got the bad collarbone. Like, we're still coaching him, too, even though he can't go through the drills. We're still teaching him the offense, and he's getting all the mental reps he can get, and he's studying film. We're, we're on him to study film. Like, they're coaching him to study film because the season ain't lost, and it sure seems like they definitely want to get him back. Um, so, yeah, man, and I get it. I get why James Blackman isn't going to inspire a lot of confidence in, 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 in the people listening to this show. And when you hear that he didn't do great, uh, it didn't have a turnover. Maybe he had the one turnover on a on – a, Tipped in or tip ball interception, but wasn't wasn't moving that him up was, and no, down the field. That was Rodemaker. I'm pretty sure that was Rodemaker. Okay, Rodemaker's so yeah, Blackman didn't have a turnover, but wasn't lighting up the scoreboard either. Yeah. I get why people are. I get it. You're, you're James Blackman out. You've seen it for since 2017. You want something different. I got it. You're probably not going to get something different, like Aslan said, at least for the first month. And it's just a matter of uh, doing what you can with him. And maybe he's better than maybe he's better than he's ever been. Maybe he is. Maybe he's going to be better than he's ever been. That's what you got to I don't see why hope. it wouldn't be, yeah. I, just, I don't know how much, you know, better than he's ever been. I don't know if that – that obviously is not, quote, unquote, Florida State caliber. So it's hard for fans to kind of wrap their head around that. But it just, you know, it's the best option out there, I think. I don't – I just don't – part of me kind of wishes there was like a spring game or like maybe that week between the opener in Miami, maybe they could do some sort of – televised scrimmage or maybe do some quasi attended scrimmage where you know, they let some people come and watch it. Like let, let Jordan Travis play. Like I want to see Jordan Travis play just because so many, I don't want him to like prove anybody wrong or right, but like, let's see the kid because so many people continue to have questions about him. And he's brought up in every thread. Like, why don't we ask about him? Why don't we talk about him? And I'm like, all right, well then let's, yeah, let's, let's see it because he, he showed some flashes, but ultimately, you know, you would imagine when Willie was let go and they had, what, four games left? Because they had, what, BC, Alabama State, Florida, and then the bowl game? Yeah. And they had four games and then, I don't know, eight weeks total to get ready for all those games. You would have assumed that if Jordan Travis was a guy that they had a lot of confidence in, or not even a lot, just look what James Blackman was. They kept him in there. That's, I just, I, that's why I don't get this. And it's just part of the whole, you know, the backup's got to be better. I remember. Well, they, buddy, went with, they went with Horny Brook some. Well, yeah, but he checked out by then. Um, oh, yeah, by the sun, by the Sun Bowl for sure. But like yeah. they they went back and forth between him and Hornybrook, and Hornybrook played really well in one of those games. But then the Miami game was a disaster, and there was no adjustment at all to go back to Blackman because we even said that week, I think, even though Hornybrook, I think, had played well the week before, that man, this might be the t Blackman at least will throw the ball downfield. Yeah, he yeah. can stretch them vertically if they know your quarterback can only throw it seventeen yards. They are not going to respect anything deep, and you're. Not, it's going to be a tight space with all those defenders, and they're good anyway, and that's not a recipe for success, and it wasn't. And they never put Blackman in the game. And I think this coaching staff, and I'm not blaming that on Bryles. He doesn't get the final say. But, uh, you know, maybe maybe Willie wanted to make a change, and Bryles was like, nah, I, think Horny, I think Alex has got him figured out now. Who knows how those conversations went? But um, I do think this this coaching staff will not be hesitant at all about making a change if Blackman struggles. Willie, when Francois struggled, wouldn't think about going to Blackman. It didn't appear. And even when Hornybrook was struggling against Miami, didn't go back. And then, and then I think Blackman started the next game. Like, okay, well, if he's good enough to start the next game, why didn't you bring him out in the second half against Miami? Like, just a lot of questionable, weird decisions with the quarterbacks. And basically, when you're having to make those decisions, you don't have a quarterback. When you're always having to wonder, okay, who should we put in this time? I think Blackman can be good enough I just think Blackman can be good enough to, for this to have a, to be a decent season. But you're also going to, when he's healthy, I feel like you're going to want Chubba to at least get out there and get some experience and have a package in. Maybe by the sixth game of the season, he's actually starting. Or like we said, maybe Blackman really takes a step up. Maybe this is, because he got coached by Jimbo for a year, but it was that Jimbo. He hasn't had elite coaching really since he got here. Yeah. So, 
he gets a chance now, you hope. Uh, to, and maybe he's taking it well. Maybe he's, maybe he's getting a lot better. Maybe he actually made most of the right reads on Saturday. His, his receivers just were not getting open, and his line couldn't block. And that's not James Blackman's fault. He did get in against Miami, but the game was like well out of hand. I think he threw a pick against Miami too. Like it was, oh. he got he got trotted out there with maybe like six or seven minutes left, just kind of you know desperation move. But that was BC, Alabama State, Florida, Arizona State. Did Hornybrook go in against Florida? I feel like they let Blackman pretty much die. On yeah, the I don't remember. Game. It might have been it might have been Blackman the whole time. I, right. I, I, I as you know, I've kind of put all those games out of my memory. I've Fair. just kind of flushed them. Understood. Understandable. Understandable. Man, I'm on, I was on Noel fan. I'm scrolling through there. I'm like, they hung 63 on us? It's like, no, that's what the basketball team hung on them. Oh, um, you clicked the wrong one. <laughs> yeah, that would have been, been a little bit awkward. You wouldn't have been stunned <laughs> if it was 63, though. That's how bad that defense was. Yeah. No well, pride I mean, either, man. No pride. And that was what was so encouraging. Like, just think about the defense you saw against Arizona State. I know they were missing some of their guys. But if the defense had played with that amount of pride... Just not even all that much talent because Marvin wasn't playing, Hamsa wasn't playing, Kando Woodby wasn't was playing, yeah, Kando man. was out. Like, but they played with pride and Absolutely. ferocity. Yep. If they could just play, it, now they have some more talent, and if they could keep that mindset, and like Norvell said, it was like 11 hats flying to the football, like wild, crazed dogs like you see Georgia play like. If Florida State could find that kind of mindset, that magic mindset, man, I'm telling you, that's, that's a huge deal. Not just for this year, but what it, what it starts like, like maybe getting getting back to what this culture should be on that side of the ball because it's been too much of catching blocks, throwing your arms up when you get beat for a touchdown, posing on a guy after he scores a touchdown, all that stuff that you want to get out, and not enough just making plays and may, and being ferocious about it. And maybe this defense with these new, with these no, new coaches can set that standard. Again, think about this. There was a head coach here who decided after the worst season in nearly 40 years to go into the subsequent year coaching a man down to keep a guy as a personnel director because he's some sort of recruiting ace, although they were never able to get a quarterback from the high school level. Right. That well, guy, hey, hey, we don't, we don't have to relitigate with the Willie Taggart. Era but I think that, that has to be part of why the upshot of the season – yeah. Versus like the fact that this team actually has to go out and produce just they're not going to they're not going to be weighed down by yeah. really dubious decision making. Plus the whole fact of like you talk about the, the defense catching blocks for who? Like well, who's in this linebacking core that you're like, "Yeah, man, just, you know, yeah. coop, eat eat a block. Let let, let Dontavius make a play. Let five shine." Like, what, yeah. what are we thinking here? So I mean, these are the sort of decisions that were made on a week in and week out basis over the course of 2 years which has a residual effect that's going to hurt you over the long run. And, again, it's just it's such a bummer that didn't, they didn't have the 15 spring practices to really shake all that stuff out and then come yeah. to the preseason, hit the ground running. But I, I don't think any other staff could have really done as good with the situation they were kind of presented than this staff. So let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Let's follow along with Corey and Ira. Mainly Corey, though. Ira and Shotgun. Corey's mm -hmm. Batman. And that defense is going to be markedly improved. And that's going to matter. And that's going to that's – change well we think it will be right and i guess that was the point oh, of the column what do, you, what I wrote. do you mean we, we think we can be even for 30 minutes you've been marching no up i'm the saying the flag how oh, big it how how important it is if it is a better defense if it's a good defense what that would mean and that's why it's so important that they do play that they did scrimmage well because that's what you're wanting that's much more important than if the offense scored some touchdowns and busting some 70 yarders you want a defense that can play like that because you haven't seen it i'm going to slow my roll i'm not predicting a top 10 defense by any stretch, but if you're looking for positive signs out of a scrimmage in the middle of August, the biggest one is, man, that defense played lights out. That's, that's just what this program needs more than anything right now, is a defense that can play lights out. And hopefully that begets more defenses that play lights out uh, in, in the coming years. That's all. I, just because they played well in a scrimmage doesn't mean they're going to be awesome. After all, they're going up against that offense. Am I right, folks? Hey, -oh. hey -oh. But, but uh, it's a good sign. It's a positive sign. It's better than the alternative. Well, hopefully this mission takeover stuff takes hold and then you got shorter fields to start on. And just by, by the law of averages, if you start on a shorter field more often than not, you probably have a better chance to get touchdowns as opposed to field goals. So we can wish. We can hope. Yeah, yeah. Just make them punt. That could be a mission, too. That, that was something that they failed miserably at last year. <laughs> They should just mission, make them punt. Make them kick. 
Even if it's a field goal, even if you hold them to three. Mission, make them kick. Mission kicker dude. We want to see the yeah. kicker dude yeah. out there. Uh, was there anything else that caught your attention looking at the the limited scrimmage highlights? I think it was Lawrence Tofili had a couple nice runs. Uh, DeKalen Brooks, rumors of his demise greatly exaggerated, yeah. still around, laying the lumber. Mm -hmm. I think Corey Wren felt him. Uh, yeah. Anything else that caught your eye, either from that or anything that John Papuchis or Adam Fuller? Or, uh, one thing I'll say this: I, I did like, uh, I liked a lot about what Kenny Dillingham said. I think I'm, I'm probably a little bit bearish on Kenny. I think this is, I don't know, it's just so weird when you got a head coach that's his offense. We think in an entirety, or at least I do. I don't know where Kenny really factors into all that. And he's a young guy, and I don't know how much cachet he has, but I, I do appreciate his his energy, his verve, as Corey would say. But I do like how he. I think he was asked. If anybody flashed, and it was one of those things where it was just he had no interest in even trying to to blow sunshine or blow smoke up anybody's, you know what? Because he just wasn't happy with what they did, and I think that goes to Brady Scott talking about being coached hard on the offensive line, James Blackman talking about being coached uh, from the top down offensively, like the fact that he wasn't even willing to entertain that question and throw some, oh yeah, you know, the, the true freshman kid. Toafili had a couple nice runs. Like, no, nah, that, that, that doesn't matter. Like, it's every little thing they do matters in everything they do. And if you're not going to play up to the standard, there's no point in trying to find a silver lining in that. Again, that, that kind of accountability, that kind of hard coaching. And they got a few weeks left, everybody. They got like three more weeks until they're going to play a football game. Uh, they can get good enough to beat Georgia Tech, and that's what you have to worry about. You don't have to be good enough to beat Clemson on September 12th. Just be good enough to beat Georgia Tech on September 12th. And I think they're on that right path. I like yeah, that. Yeah, you know, they're hard ass, all of them on that side of the ball. Um, and they're, they don't, I don't think they're just going to accept it. Like, okay, you know, that's, you look, it is a really good defense. And, and Dillingham said that either, like, because uh, he was asked about, you know, you're up, you are going up against a really good defense. And he's like, look, I, I, it's like I told my quarterbacks afterwards, what, what the other people on the field do matters not at all. It's all about us. And yeah, they're good players over there, but that doesn't matter. How, that should not affect how we play and how we prepare and how hard we play. And, you know, and, and I just think uh, those two guys uh, specific, well, Atkins too, they don't take it easy on these guys. And like, you look, man, I understand it's Marvin Wilson. That's tough. No, block them. Right. Get your feet right. You're on Get your second step too. right. Yeah, get your hands right and block him. And I, I, I don't think they accept anything less. I think the standard is the standard. I don't think that's coach speak. Willie would come in. I guess I'm relitigating Willie again. Willie would come in after every loss and say, we're going to get better. We will not accept this around here. And then you'd see the same mistakes over and over and over again with nothing being done about it. And I think this is different. I don't know because we haven't seen it play out. All we have to go on is the last eight months, the last three weeks of practice interviews, and then what he did at Memphis, was, which was impressive, but it was Memphis. So I don't know that for sure, but I can't foresee Mike Norvell, and you, you people have watched him enough in videos and heard him talk and then listened to us talk about him in Dillingham. He is not going to be someone that just kind of shrugs after a bad loss. Or just not even a bad loss, just kind of shrugs after a bad play. Or uh, it, it, he is going to be irate, and he's going to get things fixed. I truly believe that. Now, the question is, is the talent on the roster right now capable of being fixed? You know what I mean? Or is it going to take a year or two to cycle through, especially up front, for them to get good up front? But overall, he is going to figure out a way to get the best out of these guys. I truly believe that. If, if I sound like I'm, on, I'm his agent, I think, they're, I think they're going to figure out a way to get the best out of what they have to work with. And they're going to be decent on that side of the ball. I think they're going to be pretty good on the defensive side of the ball. They're going to be much better in special teams, and that should equate to more wins. It just should. And I don't think they accept... I mean, I can't even imagine what Norvell would do if he was down 42 nothing at half. I don't know. And I hope I don't have to see it. I might. But does he strike you as someone that has a program that just quits? That when just that has happen? teams that just quits? When were, when were, when were we down 42 nothing at half? Clemson. And 18 was that bad? No, it was 19. 18 was 59 to 3, and two kids, kids got kicked out for throwing punches down by 56 points. We weren't last year. Oh, no, it was 28. It was 28 nothing and a half. It was 42 nothing in the third quarter when they yeah. pulled Trevor Lawrence out. Come on, come on. Sorry, Get I apologize. I apologize to every member of the 2019 team. Sorry, Willie. Sorry, Willie. That, that was ridiculous. I don't know why. I don't have to embellish. It was bad enough. I don't have to make stuff up. I apologize, guys. You didn't get down by 42 points at 
the first 30 minutes. It was like the first 36 minutes. Yeah. Um, so I take that back. But I, I just, the, the team lacked fight. It just didn't fight. Mm. And I, I just, you, that's, you instill that. You, and it's, I think that starts with the defense. And I just think the defense isn't going to be, I just think the defense is going to have more pride. It's going to play with more pride. And we'll see what that looks like. We saw what it looked like again against Arizona State. And now they're going to be coached better, a lot better, I think. So let's see let's see what it looks like now. Do you think we'll reference Willie more less or the same than we as we did Jimbo in eighteen? See, the reason Jimbo was referenced so much is because we were trying to find explanations on what in the world we were seeing in eighteen. You know what I mean? Yeah. There had to be a reason other than this guy just could not coach at this level. Um in or his coaches just did not work well together. Whatever the reason was, there had to be a reason other than just that he didn't know what he was doing. So Jimbo came up a lot. I think if we're referencing Willie, no, the answer is no. And if we're referencing Willie, it's more like, yeah, so I guess as a uh, an insult, like to him, to Willie, like, look, this is this is what happens if their Florida State is winning. This is what happens when you have a competent coaching staff. They can get through to players and make them play hard. Yeah, I think that's how we'll reference Willie. I don't think we're going to get a whole lot of, at least I'm going to try to hold off on, well, look, Norvell, he was handed this, he was he, he was dealt this hand. because I, we're, I'm going to try to stay away from that as much as possible. We all know the hand he was dealt. We all know they were 18 and 20 the last three years. Nobody's expecting them to win 12 games. Um, but so I, I, I will try my best not to, every time Florida State loses, to be like, well, look, this is all Willie Taggart's fault. I'll try yeah, not to do that, but I'm it will be. Gonna, I'm not going to go there. I just think that I don't want to go. I don't want to relitigate Jimbo. I think 16, we we disagree quite uh, quite extremely on on what we think of 16. I just think you had a bad Jimbo for three months, and I think maybe some people think it was a year and three months, but I I kind of probably round too much down. So we had we had three bad months of Jimbo versus two bad years of Willie. I just think that's probably a little more difficult to shake, but. Last thing I'll say as we go out, then you can obviously count. Well, the point three. I just say three bad months results wise. Okay. It, it, that that did just come out of thin air. What what was happening to the program? That was a that was a work in progress. Promissory notes, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et yeah. cetera. Entitlement. Right. right. All, Valet, all the stuff that we were dealing Valet, with. All that stuff. Although we had everybody, yeah, real quick, if I can, if I can just come clean, defend my guy. You guys, you know, the whole fact that came out Jimbo Chronicles that this guy had valet parking for his players. And then they have pedicabs that would dr- that would pedal players last year between the locker room and the practice field. Hey, there's a there's a there's some gray area there. There's a fine line. Anyways, anyways, but no. <laughs> oh, seriously though, I, mean, I can't believe we spoke 45 minutes about a scrimmage we didn't even get to see. It's amazing. I, I can't. Believe That's how we do, man. Free. It's amazing. I just think another another thing too. So much of this. This is the difficult thing about. You have to. It's about the trust fall. You have to trust everything. You have to let go. Be a fan. Be optimistic, because you can think about what's going to possibly change with this offensive line and the same quarterback, et cetera, et cetera. Just what James Blackman's godfather, sorry, his uncle uh, said. You know, it's the coaching is what's going to be different, man. Like the coaching is the coaching is what's going to be different. So when, when like Willie got here, his thing he looked at and diagnosed the problem as in a bunch of kids that got sort of jilted, got left at the altar were betrayed by this guy leaving them to go to College Station, which is just, it's crazy again, I think about it. It, it. Sometimes it hits me different days than others that he left for College Station, Texas. And then he... I know, buddy. I'm sorry. He diagnosed it as, I got to put my arms around these guys. I got to love them up. You know, we're going to have fun again. I watched these kids play football on film. You know what I didn't see? I didn't see a team having fun. We're going to have fun. We're going to celebrate big plays. We're gonna have fun. Like that was the that was the diagnosis. That was the treatment plan. This staff is work. One percent better. Work. One percent better. That in of itself, I know that's a very esoteric thing. You can't really wrap your, your arms around. There's no there's nothing tangible about that, not until you see the, the games being played. But man, that messaging, even through Zoom calls, even through the through the preseason, now they're going down to twenty hour a week. Uh, we uh, preparation because it's it's in season now, man. That that's 
got to change. That's got to change the desire that you've mentioned. That's going to change the way that you look at ball security when you're being just coached so freaking hard all the damn time by every single coach. Again, the way they, the way they dispersed special teams last year was crazy. Like John Papucci, he's an absolute madman out there we saw in the first three practices. There was just overall is a, is a tone and a message being set by the staff that there's really no reason to not be optimistic at this point. So read Corey's stuff, listen to yep. Corey what he says, and yeah, the defense is better than the offense right now. It's to be expected, and it's a good thing. The offense will, they'll, they'll, you know, they'll make their quote baby steps or newborn steps. Although it's a bit of a misnomer because again, as Corey pointed out, uh, newborns don't walk. But that's all I got. I'm done. You want to talk about that? You can poke some holes uh, in it, or you want to? No, no. Oh, I, I agree to all that. Uh, what do you think the over under is on uh, how quickly FSU uh, goes to remote only classes? Oh, good. You think it's by the end of this week? Because no, I do. No. Nah. You think it'll be early next week? Nah, John, Johnny Thrasher ain't got quit in his soul. I'm going to keep pushing through. Hey, man, Johnny Thrasher's got the tuition money, baby. That's that's all locked and loaded. We, for people that don't know, and I hope you do, uh, classes at Florida State start today. Oh, God. Um, so the, the campus is loaded again. It is. Uh, well, I should say the city is loaded again with college students. And as we've watched all over the country, there's going to be an outbreak. It's just a matter of when they, in my opinion, it's just a matter of when they shut it down. And uh, NC State and North, I think North Carolina, they shut down practice for a couple of days because they had outbreaks, but they're supposed to resume today. NC State said they were shutting down and going to online only classes, but they were also going to resume foot. They were going to keep football going. East Carolina in North Carolina, there's, they, it's in the state of North Carolina. Greenville. 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 Yeah. So they just went straight up. Once they saw what happened at North Carolina and, and NC State, just went straight up. We're not even going to try. Well, they had we're nine going, positives, I think. They had nine or ten positives themselves on the football team. Who, on East Carolina? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so they're like, you're, uh, hey, we're done. Online classes aren't happening. Or no, regular classes aren't happening. We're right. going all online. Uh, the, 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 real, the real question is, are you going to send the students home? That's, that's what I'm waiting to see what happens at all these universities. Um, to me, that, then we're, we are 100% playing football if that happens. Right. Well, um, no, yeah, but, no one has yet. No one has yet. They haven't sent the kids home. No, no, they, they, now they, they, you know, that's still my issue is like, okay, you can tell them not to go to class. That's great. But what are they doing from like 5 PM to midnight? I assume they're all still congregating somewhere. So that's still an issue, but Hey, right, right. we'll see what happens. We're all holding out hope. We got, what do we got now? Aslan? It's the 24th. Don't we got 19 me. days. Whew. We're, we're Wyatt Sexton away <laughs> from AJ uh, Westbrook. AJ, AJ. They another great 19, EJ, EJ Green. We're, we're E.G. Green away from, uh, from playing football this season. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it, Tallahassee, and let's do it, America. Warchant.com is the ultimate inside source for FSU football and recruiting. And now you can get in on the action for free for an entire month. Warchant.com is offering a risk-free 30-day trial subscription. Get full access to the number one website covering the Seminoles just by entering the promo code WARCHANT30. That's WARCHANT30. Sign up and get in on the world's most active FSU message boards. Receive breaking news, stories from our award-winning staff, plus get exclusive interviews and videos. Just enter the promo code WARCHANT30. WARCHANT.com, your ultimate Seminole sports source.